467. Chalcedon's Direction. Chalcedon Report number 356, March 1995. Back in the 1930s, as a university student, I learned much about the history of the Church and its sometimes wayward drift. Most important, I learned of the total gospel as the Bible has presented it. The early Church, as the new Israel of God, Galatians chapter 6, verse 16, lived by God's law word. It saw its mission as the redemption of all peoples and the kingdom of God on earth. It early created the diaconate, Acts chapter 6, to minister to the needs of believers and later of others. It created courts to adjudicate conflicts in its midst, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It took up collections for relief and so on. It redeemed captives, cared for the elderly, for children, for the sick and needy, and its deacons were hated by Rome. The church was persecuted as imperium in imperio, as an empire within the Roman Empire, which the kingdom of God should always be in an alien world. But in the 20th century, the church has extensively surrendered to Marxism and modernism, the social gospel, humanism and more, often being more receptive to alien faiths than to the Bible. Long before I established Chalcedon, I felt earnestly that the road to renewal began with a theological revival, coupled with a diaconal one, a restoration of full-time deacons to renew Christian ministries in health, education and charity. At one time, all three of these were in Christian hands and were ministries of grave importance. Quite rightly, Rome hated the deacons, as witness St. Lawrence, who was so savagely martyred. In the 1950s, I began working on the theological foundations, by what standard, 1958, then on the educational, published in 1961, Intellectual Schizophrenia. I had, meanwhile, been working on the Messianic Character of American Education, 1963. In more recent years, we have begun a very diaconal missionary, headed up by John Upton, with several very able persons actively involved. We believe that God requires this of us. We want no part with those who simply want to satisfy their own bent and to forget the wholeness of our calling. We hope to grow in this expanded ministry with your help. We have many more directions where we hope in time to develop fresh ministries. The issue is the kingdom of God. Churches have too often handed government over to the state. As I have been saying for a year, with too little response, government means, first of all, the self-government of the Christian man. This must be its essential meaning for us. Then, second, the family is God's basic governmental, quote, institution, end quote, created in the Garden of Eden and essential to its kingdom. Third, the church is also a government ordained by God. Fourth, the school is a government and an essential one which Christians must establish and maintain. Fifth, our vocation is a government that controls most of our days and is basic to kingdom building. Sixth, the various organisations, social communities and standards of our life do govern and influence us. Seventh, the state is also a government, one among many, but a danger when it seeks to be a government over all spheres. Earlier in our history, the state was only referred to as civil government, one form of government among many. To speak of civil government as government is implicitly totalitarian. We have a duty to restore true government, beginning with self-government. The practice of self-government is an impossibility if we adopt victimhood to explain our failures. But victimhood is very popular in our time, and many people see it as a source of our ills. Some particular group, the capitalists, the masses, the Jews, the whites, the blacks, Hispanics, Asiatics, etc., men, women, or any other segment of society. Victimhood is the antithesis of moral responsibility and its popularity rests in the smug self-assurance that it is the others, not we, who are to blame. Incidentally, some see Christian Reconstructionists as a source of all evils and R.J. Rushdoony as the evil leader. Of the making of fools there is no end. God, in his word, summons us, not to victimhood, but to moral responsibility. We are to stand before God and confess our sins, not the sins of others. 
We all have people, no doubt, who are busily confessing our supposed sins and seeing us as the problem rather than themselves. Such a course is sinful, and also the route to madness. Our direction is the kingdom of God, as best as we are able. The Lord does not save us to live in self-satisfaction and self-indulgence, but to serve him with all our hearts, mind and being. This is our daily purpose and goal, and we trust that it is yours also. We will soon be increasing the scope of our diaconal and mission work with your help. Remember, too, that the deacons of the early church ministered both to men's spiritual and also physical needs, as witness Stephen. Acts chapter 6 verse 8, chapter 7 verse 60. And Philip, Acts chapter 8, verses 5 to 40. And yet a recently published six-volume Bible dictionary has no entry for deacons. But William Smith and Samuel Cheatham in a Dictionary of Christian Antiquities, 1875, remind us that the deacons were continually called Levites, volume 1, page 527, because they were created in terms of that Old Testament order. As Levites, their function were in terms of God's law and his mercy to those in need. The absorption of the diaconate into a mainly liturgical function was a serious mistake. One of our critics has expressed contempt for our diaconal ministries as lacking in intellectual status. Well, if status were our goal, we would never have started Chalcedon in the first place. Our purpose is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, or justice. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. If you agree, then please pray for us and support us financially. There is much to be done. We have a world to conquer for Christ. We do it not through coercion, but through conversion. We do not seek a top-down solution, an imposition from above, but a grassroots strategy, the conversion of peoples and the reordering of their lives in terms of God's law word. We have a king, Jesus the Messiah, who requires that we abandon the Gentile strategy, exercising dominion and authority over peoples in favour of his way. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 and 28. In this our calling, we need your help. 